Hello and welcome to another video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. We're going to take a semi in depth look at quite a few different ways to convert your images to black and white, focusing on one specific way that's just a little bit more special than the rest and yields much, much better results. Now, a color image here in Photoshop is composed of what are called channels, and each color channel is doing its part to make your image what it is. Now, when we convert an image to black and white, we are getting rid of this color data, but we can use that color data to enhance the way Photoshop creates our black and white. And in, and in at least some of the ways here that we're going to create black and whites, we're going to utilize color channels, and we're going to take a look at them. Now, the quick, easy, and obvious way to create a black and white is simply by hitting Control or Command Shift U, and that is the same exact as coming up here to Image Adjustments Desaturate. You can see the hotkey is Shift Control U or Shift Command U if you are on a Mac. But creating black and white this way really leaves a lot to be desired from a photographer's point of view. It's a really bland, not much contrast black and white. It's really simple and it doesn't really utilize any of your color channels except for the fact that it goes and it just sucks all the color right out of them and just leaves you with brightness values so this really isn't a good way to create black and whites even though it is quick and easy let's take a look at a slightly better way to create a black and white and that is by coming up here to image going to mode and hit grayscale it's going to ask you if you would like to discard the color information and if you're converting to a grayscale you have to discard the color information so here we go we have a grayscale image. If we check out our channels palette, and that's under window channels, you can see that we now only have one channel, and this is the gray channel, and that's all you have in a grayscale image is your one gray channel, unless you create new channels. But by default, a grayscale image has one gray channel. I'm going to come back up here to edit, and I'm going to undo grayscale. Now, notice with the RGB image, we have four channels our one RGB channel which is really three channels combined we have a red channel, a green channel, and a blue channel so we've got these three color channels here which form this RGB image and when we just come up here to image adjustments desaturate you can see all of our channels stay but all the channels become the same so it's just really sucking all the color out and not utilizing that color information to create our black and white I'm going to command or control Z to undo that Let me go back to the layers palette here. So that way we really don't want to do or use, excuse me, to convert our images to black and whites because that gets rid of a ton of color information as well. Let's look at another way here to create a black and white. And we're once again going to come over to the channels palette and you can see that we have these three channels, red, green, and blue. Now the red channel here looks pretty good as far as a black and white is concerned, except that the building looks pretty overexposed. The gray channel doesn't look very good. There's not much contrast at all. The blue channel, the building looks pretty good, but the sky looks all blown way out. It's way overexposed. But let's say we like the red channel and we were going to use this. We could select the red channel and just come up here to Image and hit Mode Grayscale. Discard other channels. It's going to ask me. I'm going to hit OK. And there we go. That's our grayscale image. Once again, we're not using the green or blue channels, and we're not getting the full black and white that I want here. Although, one thing we can do here is come up to Image, Adjustments, Levels, and we can play around with the Levels Adjustment here on the red channel. And hit OK, and convert that to grayscale. Once again, it's going to ask me if I want to discard my channels there. A second ago, it asked. And I hit OK, and here's our gray scale image. Again, I don't want to create a black and white like that because it's still not as good, and it doesn't even give me the kind of control that a different method will give me. One last way I would like to show you how to create a black and white or convert your image to black and white, I should be saying, is using the LAB color mode or lab color. Come up here to image mode, LAB color. And if you look under channels, you can see we have much different channels. We've got this lightness channel and A and B channels. We're going to select the lightness channel here. We're going to once again come into image adjustments levels. I'm going to play around with the mid-tone slider, make the image a little bit darker. And I'm going to hit OK. And I can come right up here to image, mode, grayscale. 
It's going to ask me once again, discard other channels. Okay. I would like to discard those other channels. And we have our grayscale image here. So each of those ways of creating a grayscale image is just slightly better than the way before it. So now I'm going to show you the way that I create my black and whites and the way which in my opinion is the best way to create black and whites and certainly gives you the most control over how Photoshop uses those color channels to give you color. And this way is called the channel mixer. We're going to be using a command here in Photoshop called channel mixer. The channel mixer is located here under image adjustments channel mixer we are not going to use this channel mixer though so just hit cancel we are going to use a channel mixer adjustment layer the reason I'm going to use a channel mixer adjustment layer is because adjustment layers give you much more flexibility down the road so hit this circle here at the bottom of your layer palette it's half black half white and a pop-up menu pops up and come down to channel mixer you're going to see it's going to create this adjustment layer here over in your layers palette and we get the channel mixer dialog box once again now, first thing we're going to do is check off monochrome here. And we've got our black and white. But it's not that simple. See, we have these source channels here, the red, the green, and the blue. And each of them represent the red, green, and blue channels. And we want to mix these channels to achieve that perfect black and white. Whereas before, we could just use 100% of the red channel by selecting the red channel and saving that as a grayscale image. Here in the channel mixer, we can say only use 80% of the red channel. So I'm going to dial in 80%, and we are using 80% of the red channel. Now, when you create your black and white and you start messing with the channels, all three of these numbers ought to equal 100 when you finish. For example, I could do 60 in the red channel, I'll do 30 here in the green, and 10 in the blue. And 60, 30, 10, you've got 100. 100% of your channels are coming back into the image here. And we could leave it like this. I actually want to bump it up a little bit. Let's say 85, 10, and 5 here in the blue. And I kind of like that for this specific image. It's going to depend on your image. You're going to want to play around with it a little bit. And now we're going to hit OK. And we have our black and white. That is the way I convert my images to black and whites. But we're not going to stop there. We're going to take it a couple steps further. And we're going to use a few more adjustment layers. And we're going to do a little bit of dodging and burning and make this black and white truly a great looking black and white. The next kind of adjustment layer I'm going to use is the color balance adjustment layer. Come under the adjustment layers pop-up menu here and hit color balance. And you could actually use curves for this, but I'm going to use color balance because color balance, we've got the curves adjustment layer here. Color balance is you have your channels here. You got your red, green, and blue, and if you're working in CMYK, you've got your cyan, magenta, and yellow here. We are going to up the amount of reds. We're in the mid-tones here, by the way. We're just going to work in the mid-tones. We're not going to go into highlights or shadows. We're going to push reds up a little bit. We're going to drop blues down, which is going to give us some yellows. And we're going to up greens just a little bit. Put a little bit more red. Now, as you notice, the image is getting color. This is, well, number one, because we haven't gotten rid of our color channels. By using an adjustment layer, I'm going to hit OK here. By using an adjustment layer, I can just shut these adjustment layers off, and we're back to our color image. Oops. If I go under channels, you can see we still have our red, green, and blue channels here. So that's one reason I like to use these adjustment layers is because it's very non-destructive. But that doesn't really help us here. This color balance adjustment has given us this color. The way we can get rid of this and save the adjustments to the black and white is by using a blend mode called luminosity, all the way down here at the bottom. Luminosity is essentially a fancy word for brightness. So when you change a blend mode to luminosity, it takes the information that is on that layer and only affects the brightness of layers below it. So in the case of this adjustment layer, we are only affecting the brightness values of our background image. That's exactly what we want. I'm going to double click here on this adjustment layer to open back up the color balance dialog box and I want to edit this just a little bit more. I want to lower some of those greens down. Matter of fact, I'm going to put some magenta into it instead. And I'm going to put, or take away, excuse me, a little bit of the yellow and put some more blue into it. Just like that. And hit OK. And that looks pretty good. I'm going to create a new layer here, and we're going to do some dodging and burning. So I'm going to grab the brush tool. I've got my foreground color set to black. And I want to burn in the sky and this grass a little bit more. So I'm going to enlarge my brush. I am using my tablet here. If you're not using your tablet, you can set your brush to airbrush mode here. And that, what that is going to do is essentially when you hold 
down it's going to keep building up I've got an entire video on using the brush tool so you can go check that out if you would like to know more specifics on the brush tool but for now we're just basically going to paint in the sky here I'm just going to do a real rough paint in around this temple here And that looks pretty good. I'm going to flip over to the eraser tool real quick and just erase some of this. Go back to the brush tool. Just touch up the edges. All right. And I've got a very soft edge brush. Hardness is set to zero, so I can be kind of rough and it's going to kind of look smoother when I come over here and set my blend mode. And the blend mode we're going to use is, you can use overlay. Overlay tends to be a bit too harsh though. What you're going to find you're going to use most of the time is soft light. Soft light gives you a nice effect um, with your dodging or burning. Um, in this case burning, but if you're using white, it's dodging. And uh, doing that, you would also use soft light as your blend mode. And we can lower the opacity this layer. In this case, I think it made this guy just a bit too dark right there around 50 percent opacity is good and you can see the difference in the sky before and after with the burning so that looks a bit nicer the one last thing I'm going to show you is yeah this is all about black and white but we're gonna add a little bit of color back to this image and we're going to use another color balance adjustment layer here to do that so I'm going to come down here and hit color balance again and I'm going to add some red I'm going to add some yellow and I'm going to take away some green, adding magenta. I'm going to come over to my shadows here. I'm going to add some yellow and add a little bit of red. And I'm going to come to my highlights and add a little bit of red and a little bit of yellow as well. So now we've got this really just sort of colorized black and white. Again, because it's an adjustment layer, I can lower the opacity, which is exactly what I'm going to do, and lower that down to about 50%. So that just adds just a touch of color to your black and white image if you want that effect. If not, you can always just shut that color adjustment layer off and you're back to your original black and white. The one last thing we're going to do to this black and white is apply a little bit of vignetting to it. And the way we're going to do that is use the rectangular marquee tool. This is a pretty high resolution image. I'm just going to select a rectangle that comes out and covers most of the image. We're going to leave a little bit of a gap on all sides of the rectangle. And I'm going to come up here to select and I'm going to hit feather. and Again, I'm going to mention this is a high resolution image, so I'm going to use a feather radius of about 60 pixels. Uh, for lower resolution images, you're going to use something lower than that, maybe 20 or 30. It all depends on your image, um, the size of the image and the resolution of the image. I'm going to use 60 here because that works pretty well. I'm going to come back up to select and hit inverse. That's flipping my selection around, so now I'm selecting everything that was not just selected. So you can see I've got this border selected around my image, and because it's feathered, it's going to be very soft. So I'm just going to hit Alter Option Backspace to fill that with black, and you can see I've got this faded effect. I'm going to select that layer, and I'm just going to drop the opacity down to about 30%, and I've got this nice vignette effect here going around the edges of my image as well. So just like that, we've created a great black and white, and we've even taken it a couple steps further using a few more adjustment layers and some dodging and burning. So just like that, you can create your black and whites, and they're obviously much, much nicer than simply desaturating your image because you're utilizing all that color information that Photoshop has in those channels. So I hope, I hope that you have learned something from this tutorial, and I hope you go check out the website. The website is www.tutvid.com. Thank you for watching.